Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another installment in our new figure showcase series, where we do a quick review and posing session with the newest figure I'm adding into my collection. And today, we're going to be looking at the first figure released by Aug Toys ever, which is Paul Atreides from their Dune line, based on the recent Denis Villeneuve masterpiece. Now, Aug Toys is a new player in the six skill game, so I'm really curious to see what we're getting here, especially with them taking on a license that I'm really excited about. So before jumping into the figure, let's start with the property. Dune is one of those stories that was often said to be unfilmable. Now, David Lynch tried in the 80s with a movie that wasn't totally successful, and then the Sci-Fi Channel released an adaptation of the first three books in the series that was actually pretty good for a made-for-TV movie, with a decent cast including James McAvoy. But that all led to this adaptation by Denis Villeneuve. First of all, the director has made some great movies, including the first Sicario, the Blade Runner sequel, Arrival, so overall a really great pedigree, which I think gets showcased with this film. And the story of Dune itself, having read the books a long time ago, was also one of the best experiences I had reading a series. And the world building that's done is just phenomenal. The only modern book series that I think comes close in sheer scale, uh, for me at least, is the Expanse series from James Corey, starting with Leviathan Wakes. And it was also, as an aside, adapted into a great TV show, by the way. And there was another series of books that's slipping my mind, but it was a multi-generational science fiction epic that just built such amazing worlds. Anyway, we're here to talk about Dune, which remains a masterpiece to me. Now, I know the series and even the movie wasn't for everyone. A really good friend of mine and I were discussing it, and he just thought the movie was boring. Well, I really found it to be captivating. So I know firsthand that people had different reactions to it. And even my wife, who normally isn't a huge science fiction fan, loved it and thought the story, production, acting, everything was just top notch. So ultimately, I know we're here to discuss the figure, but I, I do have to say, I, I, I'm sorry about getting a little sidetracked, but I just really am a, a big Dune fan. So, Og Toys. New player in the market decided to tackle the Denis Villeneuve movie, and they started with Paul Atreides in his military uniform from the opening scenes in Caladan. So they're really an unknown for me, and they're starting with a licensed figure, so it was an interesting story overall just for the company. Now at first I did hesitate to order it, and that was because Inart announced that they also had the license and would be offering a Paul Atreides. So I held off hoping that they would announce. But listening to the interviews with their rep, I just got the sense that while they're excited and I think they're going to deliver a great figure, their rep uh, doing the circuits on streams didn't seem that high on the license. And they kind of noted that they don't know yet how deep they'll go on lines. And it'll ultimately depend on sales, which is all perfectly reasonable. But seeing Og Toys launch the pre-order for Gurney and then showcase the amazing Paul Atreides and Still Suit and the Duke Leto, uh, it honestly made the decision easy for me. So with that maybe too long-winded preamble out of the way, let's look at what Og Toys has to offer. And, and at first look, it's a decent overall package, and I think they're pretty much providing everything they could have, short of a diorama base. So besides the figure of Paul, you're getting a number of hands, a base, some books, the box that's used to test Paul um, for pain, and the components to assemble a, a floating light that can be seen in Caladan as well. Um, and you also get an additional military style overcoat. Um, so at first thought, not sure I could see anything else that could have been added here beyond what's being offered. Now let's look at the accessories in greater detail and we'll start with the hands. So he comes with an extra pair of bare hands to hold some of the accessories as well as the extended hand that slides into the box with uh, the Reverend Mother as he's being tested for pain levels. The other hands are all gloved to go with the really nice trench coat he has and again you get some um, hands in different positions to allow them to hold various items. The gloved hands look really nice and the material for them is a soft plastic that just really uh, replicates that leather-like look and, and has some nice detail work and texture. The bare hands are okay. Uh, I'm sure you'll think this is a nitpick, but the one thing I'm not sure of is the paint app on the extended hand. I think they went a little overboard on the freckling. Uh, look, the hand serves a purpose and if you are using it, chances are you won't be seeing it, so not a deal breaker at all, but something I noticed off the bat. Next up, you get his books and the pain box, we'll call it. And I really do like the work Og Toys did here. First of all, you can see the standout, I'm sure, without me having to point it out. It's the open book um, that he, he's reading on Kaladin, and it's just eye-catching. But let's look at the other accessories, too, and we'll start with that box for the paint test. It has a really great paint job here with a mix of blues, greens, and grays, and some nice texture and patterns. Next up is that, that book that Paul is reading again when he's studying the Fremen and Arrakis. 
and Og Toys is beautifully recreated. Um, that still suit page he's on, down to the text. The other thing I really like here is that this is plastic. I know it's not as real as some of the books we've gotten from, say, Hot Toys, but I love that you can basically have the figure hold the book open and it still looks impressive. And finally, you get another closed book, and the detail work here is, again, uh, amazing, capturing the intricacy of the binding and covers and the unique look of the pages within. Next accessory is a ceremonial hat, and it's serviceable. I do like the material, but it feels a little lopsided, probably something to do with the plastic inside, so maybe something I can work on. Otherwise, it's okay. The brim is nicely done, and the Atreides family logo on the front is done well too, with a nice and reflective decal. I think I would have liked something a little more sturdy though, like what Exo 6 does with the rank pips and the com badges. I think Og Toys could have done that to make this a, a little bit better. And also, um, just a note, the figure cannot wear this. I forget if he wears it in the movie or just holds it during the ceremony, uh, but just uh, a word to the wise. Next piece is actually what I consider a nice diorama element, and it's that floating light that follows Paul around on Kaladin. So it's a nice piece that definitely complements the Paul figure, and I like the work here. First of all, the piece does have its own small base that supports the light on a thin, clear plastic pole, and it also lights up. But before talking light-up features, I have to say the two cap pieces on either side of the light are so well done. The paintwork here is impressive, making this look almost like a blue stone or marble element, and then the intricate pattern in the center. It's just really impressive, especially for a piece like this. So I'll definitely be displaying this with the finger. Now, light up feature, it actually works nicely, although you don't have a visible button. You actually have to use a thinner rod to toggle a button located within the slot for the support post. So it's a bit of a pet peeve with these light up features because are you really gonna be doing this all the time if you have the piece displayed to turn it on and off? Uh, light up feature does look nice, but with the lights on um, around it, you, you really can't see it much. And then I have to say, I did turn mine on for about 10 minutes and the batteries died during the course of the review. Maybe it's just the batteries they supplied, but they didn't last long. And final accessory is the base. And normally I skip over these unless they're diorama pieces, but I wanted to discuss this because I do think it's oversized. It's a nice piece with the Atreides family crest on the top and the nice metallic nameplate up front. It's just a larger stand that's gonna take up some significant space. So not necessarily ideal, unless you only have a few figures on display. I will say when I started posing the figure, I thought I would need to use a stand, but fortunately I think the figure can stand well on its own. But I'll get into some of those issues shortly. Okay, so now let's get into the figure, and we'll start with, to me, the most questionable part of the figure, which is the sculpt. I'll start by saying, sculpt isn't surprising because we're getting, I think, something really close to the prototype that Og Toys put out. So I'm not gonna say it's a downgrade from what we got. Uh, truth is, I, I just don't think the sculpt is there. I, I think there's definitely a resemblance to Timothy Chalamet, a decent one, but there's just something off. Maybe it's the paint app or the hair, which could be throwing things off a little bit. It's not horrible, but I wouldn't rank it as one of the best scopes I've seen. Paint apps around the ears are also a tad sloppy, and at least in mine, the eyes seem to be slightly off, almost cross-eyed, which isn't great. But even if that were perfect, I, I don't think the eyes are there 100%, and maybe that's where the sculpt suffers a little bit. Um, I found that with the eyes, if they're not there, the likeness often can get lost a little bit. I do think it's a decent effort for a first try, and look, if the second Paul and the Duke Leto figure are any indication, I think Og Toys is already making strides and improving. But for this first figure, it's just okay. Now, as for the rest of the piece, I think it both shines and suffers here. And I'm sure you've already spotted one issue with the epaulet over the left shoulder. But in general, I think it's a good start. Great material choice that really drapes well in the six scale body and fits nicely and also doesn't restrict articulation. And I like the use of real metal chains for the ornamental pieces on his right shoulder. Stitching is okay, although mine is a little sloppy on the bottom of his coat. And then the boots are actual leather and they feel like it. So I appreciate that to avoid uh, the dreaded pleather rot. Although the boots were the first issue I had with the figure straight out of the box because they both just fell off and getting them locked back into the peg, the, the ankle peg, was a bit of a struggle. Once I got them in place, the figure seemed sturdy, but posing the ankle seems to be tricky because the boots do tend to pop out of the socket, so just a little annoying. Also, the collar has the military insignia. My big issue here, these look good, so ultimately that's the best 
thing you can ask for, but they seem to be glued on decals like the hat. And I think I would have preferred, again, just something more akin to what X06 has done with actual molded elements. There, there's no denying it looks good, but I think it could have been a little bit better. Now, with the jacket and the gloves, I think the figure really has some presence, and the jacket is done so well here again. Material choice is top notch, and it is wired, but in a way that you really can get a lot, out, a lot out of it. Only regretful thing with the jacket on is that you hide the ornamental pieces on the shoulder. But overall, a really good alternate look for the figure, although it wasn't in the movie for very long. Now, a few things besides the boots and the fit on the joint that I want to flag. First of all, as opposed to the prototype uh, that showed really tight fitting epaulets, there's a much more noticeable gap here. And as you can see, mine arrived unglued from the jacket. So it's something I can fix, but I'm giving you my first observations here that weren't positive. The other thing is with the belt around the uniform. It's nicely done and even the clips at the end look good, but it's misaligned and it's pretty noticeable. So is it a deal breaker? No, but I think it's something that Og Toys should work on with their QAQC. And frankly, these aren't cheap figures. They're fully licensed and they're maybe a little cheaper than Hot Toys. So quality, does to me at least need to be on par with that as far as I'm concerned. So where do I land on this one? I think based on the prototype, I got something very close to what I expected. So on that front, I'm good with what I got. There is another company that will not be named who did a Rocky figure that basically released was such a downgraded version from the prototype that it was just a major, major fail. So to have Og Toys basically deliver on their promise is a good start. As far as the figure, I'm happy. I think there's a lot to like, even with some of the issues, and I think it's something Octoys can build on. And like I said before, sculpt work already looks to be improving with some of the figures they've announced. Accessories and tailoring are really great for the most part, so I think Octoys could be a contender. Um, and they are going deep in the line, even teasing some additional figures, so I do think they're benefiting from InArt taking the slower approach. Now, if you want to wait for that InArt figure, I wouldn't blame you. I think the promise of what InArt could do is highly tempting. But I wouldn't discount this Og Toys line immediately. But again, if you're just looking for one figure from the line and one figure to represent Dune, then Inart might be the way to go. For me, looking to pick up multiple characters, Og Toys is offering something really, really enticing. And look, like I said at the very start, I know some people found the movie to be pretty boring, so I do think this is a figure that's going to appeal to someone like me that really liked the movie. Because even though it's a solid figure overall, for a collection, I don't feel like it's going to draw much attention. Especially surrounded by some great looking pieces like the new Sam Wilson cap or some Iron Man pieces, this one is going to get lost in the mix a little. And I think I've said this before, but this figure is maybe getting a better reception from me because I'm such a huge fan of... of Dune and, and the movie. So I can forgive some of the issues and know that I have a great character in my collection. But for someone not as invested in Dune as I am, I can see this figure being disappointing. Just my two cents, of course. Uh, so uh, people collect for different reasons. But for me, I definitely like the figure and I think it puts me at ease for what's to come down the line. And I think I'm going to end up with a nice line overall, representing a property I'm really passionate about. And look, if the NR figure is great, which I'm sure it will be, I'll still be tempted to pick that one up. So that was a quick look at the inaugural figure from Og Toys as a company and for their Dune line. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what else is in the works from them. I do wish I could have told you I was completely blown away by this release, but I can't, unfortunately. But I'll leave it at, I think it's a really solid offer. And I don't feel disappointed at all. So let me know your thoughts on this one. And as always, thanks for watching. And if you are enjoying, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll touch base on the next video.